NAND flash memories are based on MOSFET transistors with an additional gate called the floating gate. This gate can be found between two isolation layers and can store electrons even when the power goes out. To program a NAND flash cell, a voltage needs to be applied to the control gate while the source and drain are grounded. The electrons in the channel then have enough energy to overcome the isolation layer and move into the floating gate. Since the floating gate is electrically isolated, it can store charge even when the power is removed. To erase the charge stored on the floating gate, a high voltage is applied across the source and drain while a negative voltage is applied to the control gate. This causes the electrons to tunnel back off the floating gate through the isolation layer and into the channel. To read the value stored in the cell, a reference voltage is applied across the source and drain and then the current is measured. The current at which the gate switches varies depending on whether the floating gate contains charge or not. This makes clear whether the NAND flash cell is programmed or not. Depending how granular the voltage thresholds are, different amounts of binary information can be associated to each cell. I talk about the voltage thresholds in another video, so if you want to learn more, be sure to check it out, I've left the link in the description. Every time a cell is programmed or erased, the strong electric field damages the isolation layer under the floating gate and it starts to wear out. As the isolating properties of the layer start to worsen, the capability to retain the electrons stored in the floating gate decreases. This in turn reduces the data retention and performance and forces the flash closer to its end of life. I hope this video taught you something new. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.